Welcome to Geometry. Today is um, May 21st. Like always, make sure you, um, if possible, have a paper and pencil in front of you for you to be able to take notes and practice along with me. Um, and then let's do our stress check. So in the chat box, type in how you're feeling today. Got it. All right, thank you. I see it. And then we're just missing Victor. Keep on going, but hopefully. So today's objectives are that, are that we're going to review finding the volume of a cylinder, which is what we did our last session. We found the volume of a cylinder. Today, we're gonna to find the volume of pyramids, okay? So before we even do that, we're gonna review our do nows. Um, today's do now was solve the inequality for n. Try to have the do nows done before class, so that way this is just review and you got a chance to try it by yourself. Um, but the inequality for n. So our question is this, 25 is greater than n plus 12. What do I do? to get n by itself. And for this one, because, there we go. Because we want to get n by itself. So we get rid of 12 on both sides. And if I subtract that, that gives me 13. The symbol stays the same because the only time the symbol flips is if we multiply or divide by a negative number, okay? So now that we have this, can it be this answer? Yes. So it can be this one? Uh, no, it's... Can it be this one? No. Can it be this one? Yes. And then can it be this one? No. Okay, well, let's see. If we have 13 and n, we want n to be on this side, right? So we mm -hmm. n to this side, guess what? This has to flip. flip. Because it's like a mirror, right? So we have right. this showing in the mirror, but now we want the reflection. It would be the opposite way. So out of these two right. options, is it this one? The first one, or well, one, two, the third one, or the fourth option? Four. Okay, there you go. Okay. So now for question number two, it asks for us to find the volume of cylinder. So the volume of cylinder, do we, did you write down the, um, the formula? Right. Good. That is our formula for volume. So? It's volume is equal to pi r squared, that's how you pronounce it, r squared times height. So let's plug our numbers in that we do know. Volume equals, and then what does this symbol stand for? Uh, 3.14. Okay, and what is our radius? Three. And what is our height? 22 inches. Good. All right. And then what can I solve here that I need to solve before going into it more? First times three times three. Good. You said three times three because of the three squared. So what's three times three? Nine. Nine. And then, so then we take our calculators, and what am I going to plug in? Okay. 
What do I plug into my calculator? Once I multiply that, I get a 621.782. And what are the units? Is this in feet? Is it in centimeters? Is it in inches? Is it in miles? I think it's in inches. Inches, good. And then what exponent goes next? What number goes here? Remember, hopefully you guys remember if it's what little number goes up here, what exponent? Square root. Close, so for area, we would use um, whatever our unit is, squared. But for volume, it's gonna actually be three, cubed. So it would be in cubed. Anytime it's volume, you put a three. Whenever it's area, you put a two, okay? All right, so let's go on to our next slide. This question, so the problem for today is, a T infuser is the shape of a right rectangular pyramid. In a right rectangular pyramid is 7.9 centimeters tall, and has a base 3.0 centimeters long and not in and 1.5 centimeters wide. To make the best tea, the infuser should be 80% filled with tea. What is the volume of tea in cubic centimeters need? Oh boy, this needed to fill the infuser to 80% of its capacity. Round to the nearest tank. Ten. So I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of what an infuser is, what a tea infuser is, but just nope. in case you haven't, I made sure to include a picture. Okay. Right. But let's keep on going. We have, last time we talked about this, we talked about the difference between a prism and a pyramid. Okay? They're both three figures, but notice that a, a prism, the one on the left, has two bases. It has a base on the top and a base on the bottom. Two bases, right? right. And the pyramid only has one. Good. The pyramid only has one base, but it does have a lot of what they call faces. Faces are the one the sides. Like that's what they both have in common. They both mm -hmm. have faces. Good, exactly. But the, like you said, one prisms only, I mean prisms have two bases, pyramids only have one base. So today we're going to focus on right. the theme of a pyramid. Remember, volume is everything that's inside. So what's a pyramid? A pyramid is a solid, solid object where the base is a polygon and the sides are triangles which meet at the top. These spelling mistakes are all over today. Um, something I really want you to write down is this. I want you to write down the same way you did last time, hopefully. Last time you guys wrote the volume of a cylinder. I want you to write down volume of a pyramid and then write this volume. And I would like to see you put it in an actual um, box on your paper. So that way you can find it easily next time we use this. Right. So I'll, anytime we see a capital B, this means area of the base. So what I'm gonna figure out real quick is what is the area of my base? How do I find, and notice this is a base, right? It looks like a rectangle. How do I find the area of a rectangle? Well, if I remember from my previous lessons, that would be length times width. Or actually, this is a square, really. Um, what's my length? Is it? Oh. How long is this? Um, ten, 10 meters. Good. And how wide is it? 10 meters. So 10 times 10 is equal to 100 meters squared. So where it says area of base, I'm just gonna plug that number in. So volume equals, we know that our base, area of base is 100. We're gonna plug in at, what's our height? Oh, 
Hold on, here we go again. Um, what's the height? Um, six me metameters. Meters, that's correct. If it's just M, it's just meters. So we have our base, we have our height, and we have to divide that by three. So what's 100 times six? That would be 600. We divide that by three. And if we divide that by three, that's equal to 200 meters squared. And that is our answer. Okay. Um, but this one, so remember, for B, you find the area of the base. In this case, notice that our base is a different shape. Our base is a triangle. So I have to look back into my notes and figure out, well, what is, my, what is the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Okay. So then what's my base? My base is eight times what's my height. Notice this little line right here. That means they're the same. They're congruent. So that's eight. This is also eight. And I divide it by two. Eight times eight is 64 divided by two. 64 divided by two. Do we know what that is? That should be 32. And that's what we get. All right, so our next step. is volume is equal to, we have the area of the base, which is 32. We multiply it by the height, which if we look back our, at our image, that's seven. And everything else stays the same. Then I take my calculator and I multiply 40, sorry, 32 times seven. That's equal to 224, divide that by three. And that's going to be equal to 74.66 feet cubed. Um, I did make the mistake of the last time putting square. Make sure that if it's volume, it is cubed. So here are just a few more practice problems that you can do at home. Um, and this is a problem that I do want us to look at at some point, but we just won't get a chance to today. Um, not for that class. All right, next step. So make sure to complete the do nows and make sure to complete your exit ticket. And there is a homework assignment. I know it's not listed on this list, but there's a homework assignment that's due. So please make sure to complete anything that you're still missing um, and turn that in as soon as possible.